and I'm really, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, actually, by this occasion and by all the really lovely things that people have said, not only about me, but also about Roger, with whom I am so delighted to be able to share this ceremony as one of my long-term colleagues and great friends. Um, it seems a long time since I first walked into my first council meeting, and I decided that I was going to be noticed, and West Hampstead would get noticed. So I wore this shocking pink jacket <laughs> to my very first council meeting. It is, I fear, quite a bit older than some of you sitting here. <laughs> but it has remained in my cupboard, and whenever I want a bit of courage, I put it on. But I determined at the time that I was going to make, make us known in, in, this, in this, well, not this council chamber, but the other one, the proper one. Um, and my <laughs> colleague, Roger Billings, who got elected with me, everybody forgets, um, in 1986, um, who was coming here tonight, but actually lives out in the north of Watford somewhere, and therefore is worried about the train strikes and everything else, and who hasn't come and wasn't able to be here. But I very much wanted him to be, because he was part of the beginning. And I didn't know quite what to expect. Now, the council, you have to understand, was very, very different in those days. The whole feeling was different. When I first won, or we first won in Fortune Green against the Conservatives, the then Conservative MP, Geoffrey Finsberg, said to me, I've lent you Fortune Green <laughs> for four years, rather grumpily. And I thought, actually, 35 years is a very long loan, isn't it? <laughs> Thank God I wasn't a library book. Anyway, I would have had to pay a great deal. But in those 35 years, I've seen so much come and go. I mean, when I started, councillors weren't paid. We only got expenses, and you had to fill in lots of tedious little bits of paper and hand them in. Um, and, and then you could only get, I think, £12 a day at maximum. or It was minuscule, and it was time-consuming, and it was boring. And in those days, the chief executive was known as the town clerk and knew his place. <laughs> he had a robe and a wig. He didn't boss us all about like the modern chief executive. <laughs> and, in fact, at my very first council meeting, somebody, and I think it will probably be nameless, but probably the same person was referred to earlier, threw eggs from the council chamber, <laughs> down onto, actually down onto the Conservative benches. But we had been allocated our two seats behind the Conservatives um, because they didn't know what to do with us because they'd never had any Liberals before. So we got stuck behind the Conservatives until I made enough fuss that we got two of the little seats all by themselves. In the, and I didn't get an egg thrown me, out on me again. So, but things have changed incredibly. I started in political life well, quite late, really. Um, I wasn't politically active at all until my 40s. And I, I sort of became a liberal by mistake. Um, didn't like anybody else. Um, well, there weren't any Greens, or I might have been Green. If I'd lived in the country, I might have been an independent. But I suddenly thought, oh, there's this rather jolly little group of people. I quite like them. And then it turned out they actually needed me. Um, <laughs> They ran a perfectly dreadful Christmas bazaar, and I thought, well, I can do it better than that. So, <coughs> the next thing is, I was chair of the local party, and before we know where we are. So, anyway, when I got elected four years later, it was quite a surprise, and I don't think I realised quite how how much I wanted to do the job, or how much I had actually it was the thing I was meant to be doing. Um, I suddenly found that I could satisfy an inordinate number of my characteristics, like, I am incredibly curious. I like to know what's going on, and I like to know it before other people, <laughs> which I think led my son, who is here tonight, into, into journalism. It's wanting to know what's going on. Fascinating. So I used to love marching up to people and saying, I'm a councillor, could you tell me what the police are doing in the street? <laughs> it turned out to be Princess Diana, I remember. Anyway. <laughs> um, but, uh, so it satisfied that. It satisfied a sort of desire to be to tidy things up. Now, those who know me well know I'm not a really tidy person. In my own house, I'm not tidy. But I do like things with tidy edges and ends and outcomes. I like to, and sometimes somebody brings you a piece of casework, it's like a ball of string. 
you don't know where to pull the end out first in order to unravel the whole matter. But when it does, there's an incredible sense of satisfaction. And I would say that it gives one a whole new lease of life um, in your 40s as a woman. If your children have grown up and don't want you anymore, and there's nothing to do, <laughs> well, you know. Um, but I discovered I had this whole new family. And my whole other family turned out to be the Liberal Democrats. Now, I know this is probably not a very... So, you know, I'm not going to get applauded for saying this in a Labour council, but the Liberal Democrats are a very cohesive bunch of people. We do actually like each other which is not the same for some other parties I could mention. Um, but we do actually get on very well, and we are, to some extent, a family. We socialise together. You know, we, we, we have meals together, go to the cinema together. And with that, I think Richard Osley once wrote, after a conference he attended, that we'd had dinner together, and we were all standing outside saying, Night, night, Keith! Night, night, Flip! Night, night, Jill! As if we were sort of small children. <laughs> so I found I had a a wide family, as well as my immediate family. And that's what's, they've campaigned with me, I've campaigned with them, I've invited people here tonight who have campaigned with me over the years, or I, me for them. I loved all of that. I loved the feeling of belonging. And I suppose I should thank all of my, my immediate family <laughs> for putting up with me, my wider family for working hard with me and supporting me and campaigning with me, my colleagues across the council, from all parties with whom I have worked very happily over the years, I have been one or two disagreements. I think of some people I was quite glad to see the back of, but um, they're not here in this council chamber today, so I'm quite safe to say. And wonderful, wonderful staff and officers of the council who have been, by and large, very supportive. And um, I think possibly it's the fact that I've been around on the council so long I've known something like eight or nine leaders of the, the council, um, eight or nine leaders of the opposition. Keith Moffat belongs in both categories, so he has his name in guilt twice in the title. Um, about six chief executives. I've seen an awful lot of people come and go, and I do know where one or two quite important bodies are buried. <laughs> so I rather suspect that's why everybody's always been very nice to me, just in case. But, Finally, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to the people of Fortune Green who voted for me for so long. Thank you to the people of Camden, the wider people, and the people that I helped and represented through my wider roles in the local government association. I've had a ball. I've really enjoyed all of it. And I want to thank you all for tonight. And just to say that my heart is with local government. It's my raison d'etre. I never wanted to save the world. I just wanted to get a bus stop erected or Kentish Town baths refurbished. I did not want to go and save the world. I knew I couldn't do it. But I did want to make Camden, which is the borough I am proud and happy to live in and have been from the first time I moved here when I was a student. And that's more years ago than the dinosaurs. Um, I'm really happy that I've been able to work in and for Camden, and hopefully just make it a slightly better place. Thank you.